What's up, guys, and welcome, Daily Theologians. Phil Vischer is at it again with the most recent statements he's made in a video about nothing conservative can last and seeming to hint at the unimportance of family and even marriage. You're not going to want to miss this one because I think we can learn quite a bit. Check this out. Phil, have you gone mental? What's going on here? Here we have uh, about a minute and a half clip, and then I'll comment and say what I think we can learn from this. Like even the notion that nothing genuinely conservative can last, at least not for long. How do we know if that's not a good thing? How do we know what is and isn't good to conserve? If, if, our, only, if our only value is conservation of what Russell Kirk called the permanent things, and now who gets to decide what are the permanent things? Where does that come from? Because exactly. for a uh, hundred years, what conservatives fought to conserve in America was racial hierarchy. That was the number one thing conservatives were fighting to conserve because that was a permanent thing, because that was God established, because that was in the Bible, because the one thing that all Confederate theologians agreed on in 1865 was that the Bible was on their side. It was clear the Bible does not have any problem with slavery. So we are trying to conserve the permanent things. Slavery has always been a permanent thing in history. These Northern Yankees who don't know how to read the Bible are trying to take away our way of life and we must conserve it. So now we say, oh yeah, 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 but they were wrong. Oh yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't one of the permanent things. Now we know what the permanent things are and the permanent things are the nuclear family as came into existence in 1952. That's a permanent thing. And uh, heterosexual. What in the, what? So, okay, time out. So when you equivocate in this fashion, it's a clear problem. It's a logical fallacy where he's substituting slavery for marriage. The problem is equality in terms of humanity being made in God's image was never in debate. That's Genesis 127. Also in Genesis 127 is that he made them male and female to procreate, fill the earth and have families. So you can't substitute one out for the other and claim they're both wrong. Uh, so Phil here is clearly sliding. His cheese is sliding off of the cracker. He's sliding into uh, basically a heretical camp. I mean, what he's saying there is that the nuclear family came into existence in the 40s, which, what is that? What are you even talking about? I have some ideas, but without further context, not really worth talking about, but anyone that would diminish the importance of family, even in a passing way with that type of uh, mentality, uh, does not understand God's design for reality. Second, to say that uh, that heterosexual marriage is somehow a recent thing, uh, no, it's it's God created for the good of society, for the good of family, for the good of children. And so when you look at the created order, uh, in the beginning, God made them male and female. He created us with a purpose. He created us with dignity. He created us to be his image bearers and to represent him. This is a high calling. This is a noble task. This is a good thing, but we have failed to do so. In fact, in Mark 10, 6 through I believe it's nine here, but at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. Now look at this. And the two will become one flesh. In other words, because woman was created from man in sexual union and recreation, procreation, they are becoming one again. That's a picture of cre the created order. And two will become one flesh. They'll no longer be two, but one. So what God has joined together, what no one separate. This is in the context of marriage and divorce. But clearly Jesus is explaining and verifying the creative account that he was part of. He created human beings, by the way. Uh, so that's very important when we, we consider this because he's losing the context. He's losing reality. And he's not showing uh, any sort of spiritual discernment here. So Woke Preacher Clips posted this. He said, comparing this to Confederate theologians gets into a pretty heated rant about uh, what we've been thinking. And marriage is a preeminent thing worth worth uh, conserving, which of course it is. It's good for society. It's good for people. Uh, and there's this uh, idea that family is unimportant that Phil hints at. Phil, what are you talking about? And the problem here is that Phil's entire early ministry was based on reaching kids and children and families. And um, it, it's an important thing because the Bible and Jesus was very clear. He said this, he said, woe to you, 
that causes one of these little ones to stumble. It would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea. Now, this is not a threat or anything like that. It's just saying, look at what our culture is doing. Look at the narrative. And you say, well, this is just uh, some sort of nationalism and, and you know, you want to, um, to Christianize the country. Yeah, I want to see Christians all over the place. I want to see people saved and converted, not for some sort of uh, earthly glory, but this is certainly a religion. I mean, this is why uh, K-Dub True, uh, he, I think he's got a pretty popular YouTube channel, but he said this is, this is national. This is a form of religious ceremony. And the problem is this. Christians are to love God and love their neighbors. And when you uh, don't see the actual problem here and you're in a children's ministry and you're promoting these ideas, it shows that you shouldn't be listened to. And this video really isn't about um, trying to smear Phil. It's about pointing out the problems in his thinking and the value of family. You see, I think the family is the key issue. I think families are important because they're ordained by God for the betterment of children, the betterment of society, and the propagation of the gospel. Why do we want to see people converted to Christianity? Uh, let me go on a bit of a rant here. Stay with this. It's not a nefarious plan. It's not to hurt people. It's not for their detriment. It's not for control. It's not for money, power, or other things. In fact, quite the opposite. It's because we love people. It's because the gospel says you must repent and believe in the perfect life, death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man, Jesus Christ, because we have rebelled against God in the way he created us. We have failed to reflect him properly and thus are under his judgment. We will face uh, the judgment of a holy and righteous God because though he created us in his image, we have failed to measure up to that standard. And you say, well, I don't like that. Well, that's unfortunate that you might not like that, but it is the way he created us. And the law shows that God is righteous, just, and holy, and we are not. So we need the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which is why the gospel is good news. It means that Jesus did what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do in our sinful nature, in our sinful thinking. This is Romans 1 in Phil's rant here being uh, played out. And we must repent and see our need for the grace of God that Jesus died to save guilty rebels and such were some of you, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. We have to see that the gospel is good news and that Christians trying to help others is not some sort of uh, trying to dominate or take advantage and equivocating that this is manipulating people and, and things of that nature and we can't really conserve anything. Uh, what? The Holy Spirit says we're salt. What does salt do, Phil? Salt conserves. Light exposes. You're doing neither. You're, you're actually pushing children in the wrong direction and families in the wrong direction. So this uh, is bad for Phil. It's not bad for anyone. Christ, God's going to save his sheep. But this is a problem, and this is a warning sign uh, that you should not pay attention to Phil in a, in a positive sense. Uh, but also, I think his intentions, his intentions, I think, are genuine. He's trying to do what he thinks is best. He's just clearly theologically off the rails. So if you're still watching this, let me know what you think about this clip. Take a moment, leave a comment below. It really does help the, the channel, the video, whatever. Uh, leave a comment. And just as long as it's a positive comment, you can be, you can disagree. That's fine. But don't forget to take a moment and hammer that like button. Like the 95 theses and subscribe to the channel. Come on, what are you doing? Thank you so much and God bless.